Hi, and welcome to On the Shelves ACPL. Today we are looking at more young adult titles that are on the new book shelf. As you can tell, I'm in a new location. I'm in our young adult section at May Memorial. So let's get started looking at our books for today, which are our realistic fiction young adult titles. Our first book is The New David Espinoza by Fred Aceves. David gets slapped by a bully at the end of his junior year. And it, of course, someone records it, it goes viral, and David decides, no more. I'm going to go to a gym, I'm going to bulk up. So he starts going to a gym and he gets addicted to working out finds himself uh, befriending the gym owner who is a former pro bodybuilder. He is ignoring his family, he's ignoring his friends, he's ignoring his girlfriend. And as he gets into the deeper, darker side of bodybuilding, uh, David has to figure out if is this really what he wants and can he take the good part of working out and building your body and leave behind some of the negative aspects. Our next book is Home Home by Lisa Allen Agostini. The protagonist of this story is a young lady from Trinidad. She suffers from depression, is really struggling with anxiety and panic attacks. And so her mom thinks that the only solution is to send her to live with her aunts who live in Canada. And this young lady who is not named uh, really struggles when she first gets to Canada. It's cold, she misses her best friends, she misses the, her family that is still in Trinidad, but as she gets used to some of these things and gets settled in, she has to decide, is this really, is Trinidad really home or could Canada be home as well? Our next book is The Burning by Lara Bates. Anna and her mother have moved across the country because Anna was being bullied and tormented. She has erased her social media. She has changed her last name. She has done everything she can think of to escape from this horribly bad situation. She gets settled into her new school and is working on a local history project about a young woman named Maggie, who in the 1600s was called a witch and prosecuted for being a witch. And in that process learns that there are things that she can do to fight back against the bullies of the world and perhaps make her situation better uh, in her new school. And he maybe even confront the people who caused her so much pain in the past. Our next book is Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. Felix Love has never been in love, and he realizes the irony of that with his last name, but he also isn't quite sure what love he's going to be able to find being transgender, queer, and uh, of a minority race. However, uh, when he starts getting transphobic messages, he goes to investigate and finds himself in a quasi love triangle. So what is going to happen to Felix? Is he uh, going to find love even with what he deems as things that make it hard to find love being uh, minority being transgender and being queer. Our next book is The Edge of Anything by Nora Shalloway Carpenter. There are two young ladies in this book. Lynn is a teen photographer who finds herself dealing with some mental health issues and uh, dealing with a past that has some, some skeletons in it. 
Sage is a star volleyball player who finds out that she is now medically disqualified from playing. Both of them need scholarships and they develop an unlikely friendship and support each other through these really stressful times. Uh, this book is set in Asheville, North Carolina, so I don't know if the author is local, but the setting is certainly local. And this book deals with a lot of mental health issues and how people can cope with the stresses of life, whether those are normal stresses or stresses from things that we wish didn't happen to us. Our next book is Dear Universe by Florence Gonsalves. Chamomile Miles is in her senior year of high school, but she's a little angry at the universe. She is trying to navigate those, all of those senior year stressors. Where are you going to go to school? Who are you going to go to prom with? But she also is dealing with her father who is dying of a terminal illness. Into her life comes Brendan, who is a hospital volunteer. He wears a man bun and a tutu. And, but he is also fearless and freeing for her. Uh, he ties together that crazy high school world and her crazy life at home and helps her with both. So what will happen with Camobile? You'll have to read the book to find out. Our next book is Golden Arm by Carl Duker. Our main character, Laz, is a star pitcher, and he gets the chance to move across town, live with a host family, and go to a school with a renowned baseball team. This is his chance to get in front of Major League Scouts. Uh, it's a chance to escape uh, his background, but he knows that if he leaves his family, his mom will be struggling, his younger brother might end up uh, turning to drugs, that he's already on that path. And Laz knows that across town, he can't monitor her, his brother. He can't convince him every day that that is the wrong decision to make. So does he go after his own dreams? Does he take care of his family? How does he weigh all of these responsibilities that he has? Our next book is The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. Violet and Sam are always told that their family is not only lucky, they persevere. They are told the story of their great, 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 great grandmother who was on a ship called the Lyric. It crashes off the coast of Maine and her she survives, swims to shore, and begins the town of Lyric. Now, years later, Sam and Violet are struggling with their own issues. Uh, Sam tries to commit suicide. Violet is shipped to Lyric for the summer and decides that she is going to try to find the uh, wreckage of the ship, which no one has been able to find. She finds a friend and Liv Stone, who is also looking for the ship and learns through her summer uh, what family means and what friendship means and how we can heal ourselves after a trauma. Our next book is What I Like About Me by Jenna Guillaume. Maisie has to write a journal for the summer talking about what she does and the things that she learns. And she first looks at this as a silly exercise that she has to do and chronicles how her life is going from bad to worse. But she also finds herself entering a beauty pageant, which is not something she ever thought she would find herself doing. She has an older sister who is glamorous and beautiful, and Maisie doesn't feel like she can ever live up to that. And she has never really been comfortable, comfortable with her body. But here she is, she's entered this beauty pageant, 
And she discovers at the end of the summer that perhaps looking back at this journal, that she has recorded how she has learned to be fearless and comfortable with herself. Our next book is Unscripted by Nicole Kronzer. Zelda loves improv. She is thrilled to get to go to an improv camp over the summer. Her goals are to make it big at this camp, uh, be in Second City, and then maybe end up on Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live one day. But what Zelda realizes once she gets to camp and she finds herself on a team with a bunch of boys, that she, they kind of ignore her. They do not include her necessarily. So she kind of gets an idea of what life can be in the improv world. When comedians get together, often the women are left out or marginalized. The leader uh, or counselor or whatever of her group is named Ben. He is a little older, of course, than the other kids. And he treats her differently in private than he does in person. She says she's always seen herself or people have always seen her as the comedic sidekick, not the romantic lead. But Ben keeps flirting with her in a way that makes her feel like, okay, this maybe is more of a romantic lead feel to this. But then his attentions start to feel uncomfortable. And she doesn't really quite know what to do and how to fight back against this without ruining her chances to follow the improv career that she wants. So this book talks a lot about gender politics and the inequities in the world of improv and comedy. Our next book is Anna Kay by Jenny Lee. Anna is a top student and overachiever and her Korean parents are very excited about that. She has a bo boyfriend who is appropriate but kind of boring to her. And then she meets Count Alexia and both of them fall in, madly in love with each other. But is their relationship doomed from the start? This is a fresh new take on the story Anna Karenina. And young audiences will uh, love the story, enjoy reading it, uh, older, uh, older readers who have read Anna Karenina really will enjoy it as well as looking at a modern take of a classic story. Our next book is This Boy by Lauren Miracle. Paul is not an alpha male or an alpha male lobster, as he puts it. Someone in his freshman seminar shares this information with him a little bit soul crushing, but as he goes through high school, he makes friends and he even has a big crush on a young lady who might just be interested in him as well. This is a fascinating look at the life of a typical teenage boy and how high school can be brutal, but it also can help you uh, and lead to wonderful friendships and maybe even love. Our next book is a compilation of stories. It is called A Phoenix Must, sorry, A Phoenix First Must Burn. It was edited by Patrice Caldwell, and it has stories that explore the black experience through fantasy, science fiction, and magic. So some of the authors are Elizabeth, Elizabeth Acevedo, Amory, Patrice Caldwell, Danielle Clayton, J. Marcel Corey, and I could go on, but there are 16 names, so we're going to stop there. But there are some great authors uh, of African American young adult fiction in this book. Uh, the stories explore their experience, the Black experience, in the context of sci fi and fantasy and magic. Our next book is What Kind of Girl by Alyssa Sheen-Mel. Sheen 
Mike Parker's girlfriend comes to school with a bruise on her face. She goes to the principal and says that Mike hit her. The school immediately breaks into two camps, one which is for expelling Mike immediately, no questions asked. The other says, wait a minute, why didn't she go to the police first? What is Mike's side of the story? Let's hear what he has to say, what's really going on here. I think this is a fascinating story, uh, fascinating idea, uh, because our society certainly uh, has in the past believed the man or has excused physical violence as well, you know, that's just what happens in relationships. Uh, and now we have swung the other direction and in a he said, she said sort of situation, it is usually the one who has, has the bruises who is believed. But is that always the case? In this case, was Mike really the, perp the, the perpetrator? Is he the one who hit her? Or is there more to the story? Our next book is Miss You, Love You, Hate You by, by Abby Shear. Hannah, or Hank, has a best friend named Zoe. And while Zoe is the sun, Hank is the planet orbiting around her. But Hank can see that something is wrong. Zoe is thinner, she's sharper, she has scratches all over her arms. So Hank knows something is wrong. And can she convince Zoe to open up to share with her, to can she save her best friend? Our next book is Kent State by Deborah Wiles. This is a historical fiction. It goes through the day that the National Guard came onto the campus of Kent State and killed several students. It goes through different people's perspectives of that day, and hopefully is the kind of book that by reading it, a young adult learns about, uh, about history and how we can work to change things so that history is not repeated. Our final book is War and Speech by Don Zol Zolidis. Sydney Williams is going through a bad stretch. Her dad has been arrested for a white collar crime. She and her mom have moved into a dingy apartment. She is not doing well in any aspect of her life, but she gets into a new school and thinks this is going to be a fresh start. She befriends a group of people, all of whom have been wronged by the speech team, which rules this new school. And they see her as the perfect plant. We'll get you on the speech team. You can bring down their corrupt regime from the inside. But once Sydney starts working uh, and working with the speech team and working to make it to nationals, she realizes she's really good at this. And does she give up her chance to be on top, to be a success, to compete like her dad taught her to do, uh, to bring down these other kids? So those were all of our young adult realistic fiction novels that are in the new book section. If you thought, saw any that you would like to have, please go on to alamancelibraries.org, click on catalog, find them and put them on hold, or you can call any of our branches and we can help you do that. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on the shelves at ACBL.